Hi everyone, today I'm going to show you how to make chicken pot pie and the first thing I'm going to do is if, if you wanted to you could use a rotisserie chicken but I'm not going to do that. So in my slow cooker I have a pound of chicken tenders, you could also use chicken breast or leg size, whatever you want. You could use a whole chicken if you wanted to do that. But I had tenders so that's what I'm going to use. I've put some chicken bouillon cubes in there as well as some thyme and salt and pepper and I have my slow cooker on high and I'm going to let it get started on high and then I'm going to cut it down to low because these really do not take long at all even in the slow cooker um, and then when they're done I will show you what we will do next I'm going to go ahead and show you how to make the pie crust for this chicken pot pie. If you would rather use a store-bought pie crust, that would be perfectly fine. Whatever is easiest, quickest for you. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and show you a really good pie crust recipe. Okay, so I do this in my food processor. It's just a lot easier. It's a lot quicker. And what you need is three cups of all-purpose flour. And this should make two uh, nine inch pie crusts. To the flour I'm going to add a stick and a half of butter that I've cubed up and this is very cold. I cubed it up and I've had it sitting in the fridge all day long. I just took it out. You really want to have your butter cold because that really makes a nice flaky crust. And then here I have a third cup of vegetable shortening and I also measured this out this morning and I put it in the fridge so it's nice and cold as well. And I'm going to go ahead and add about a teaspoon of salt. I'm just eyeballing it. You can use kosher salt, table salt, whichever you prefer. You could also add some sugar to this if you want to but I'm going to try to keep it really savory so I'm not going to be adding any sugar. And we are going to pulse this until we get like coarse crumb type texture. And I'll show you what that looks like when I'm done. I have the flour and butter and everything pulsed up, but I like to kind of take a knife and run it around on the bottom because I've noticed with my food processor, it seems like all the butter and everything wants to go to the bottom. And you don't really want that. So you can see it looks like coarse crumbs. You can sort of see little bits and pieces of butter in there. Now what I'm going to do is put the lid back on. And I'm going to take out this part here so that we can add the ice water. And I'm going to add it in a tablespoon full at a time. You want to have ice water that will work perfectly and I will probably spill it in the process so I'm going to just go ahead and turn this on low and add my water a little bit at a time you, you'll you need between 8 and 10 tablespoons of ice water alright that was 8 tablespoons and you can see that the dough has come together really nicely it sticks together now I'm going to take the dough and just divide it in two and I'm going to kind of shape it a little bit like a disc and if it's not perfectly the same that's fine. I'm going to just put it in plastic wrap, flatten it out a bit, kind of make it nice and smooth. Get another piece of plastic wrap. And who else hates plastic wrap? Plastic wrap pretty much hates me because this is what it does. You want to try to form it around as much as you can. It just makes it so much easier 
to um, roll out in the end. Now I'm going to take my pie dough and I'm going to put it in to the re into the freezer for maybe about 15-20 minutes until it's set up and you know workable to where it's not super soft because right now it's just a little bit too soft to roll. I want it to be really nice and cold. Now we're going to go ahead and make the filling for the chicken pot pie. What I have here is a half a stick of butter and I'm going to melt this. You honestly probably don't need this much but I'm going to go with it. I have my heat down on medium and now what I'm going to do is add two carrots that I've chopped up as well as half of a large onion that I've chopped up. And we are just going to stir this around. You want to cook this until the onions and carrots are softened. I'm going to go ahead and add a pinch of salt. I'm just, I just have some kosher salt here. As well as some black pepper. The salt will really help the um, onions to soften up. You could also put celery in this as well, but I think celery is pretty much gross, so I don't put it in there. <laughs> um, you could put garlic, whatever, whatever kind of vegetable, like raw vegetable that you know takes some time to cook. You can go ahead and add it all in here at once and saute them all together. It's just whatever you like. After your carrots and onions have softened a bit, now this, this part's totally optional, it just depends on your preference, um, you can go ahead and add some thyme leaves. I just have a couple sprigs of thyme and I'm just going to like pull the leaves off as best as I can. I don't really want to add any of the stem. Now to the carrots and onions, I'm going to add a few spoonfuls of flour, probably about two tablespoons of flour, and I'm going to stir it in. my heat down on low now. I'm going to go ahead and add just a little bit more flour. Now I'm going to go ahead and add in a can of chicken broth. And I'm going to crank the heat back up a little bit to about medium high. And I have another can of chicken broth here just in case I need to add a little bit more as this comes up to a simmer. Alright, once that starts to simmer, you want to turn that down. I turn it down to about... Oh, just just under medium and you can see that it's thickening up really well <clears throat> so I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit more chicken broth there now to this I'm going to add about a half a cup of heavy cream um, I'm just going to eyeball it And get that stirred in really well and let that come up to a simmer and 
You can also go ahead and taste this right now and see if you think it needs any more salt and pepper or any other kind of seasoning you may want to add to it. Once that comes to a simmer, you want to go ahead and add in your chicken that you've shredded up. And now to this, I'm going to go ahead and add some frozen peas. They're kind of stuck together a little bit. I'm not going to add a whole lot of them, maybe about a quarter of a bag. This is a 12 ounce bag, so it's about probably a quarter of that. And go ahead and stir those in. And obviously you can leave that out if you do not like peas or you could add more, whatever. Now I'm going to actually turn this off and let this sit and I'm going to get my pie crust ready and then I will show you what we're going to do next. Now I'm going to pour my filling into the bottom pie crust. I've rolled out another one and I'm going to lay it on top. I'm not going to show you guys because it looks like a mess. I just took the pie out of the oven. It baked at 400 degrees for about 40 minutes. I covered it with foil and then the last few minutes I took it off so that it could get nice and golden brown. So you want to let this sit for maybe about 10 minutes or so before you cut into it. And I will show you what it looks like when I serve it up. 